This is Heavenscape, Year One, The Strathmore Chronicles, brought to you by Saturday Night Gaming. The Strathmore Chronicles, written by Tony and Jessica Stevens, narrated by Tony Stevens and Dan Stevens. Solaris Showdown, Episode One, Simmering. His bones ached with the weight of a hard life as he woke. As always, his sleep was riddled with night terrors and the ghosts of lost comrades. He groaned as he pushed himself away from the bed, fighting the urge to continue sleeping. It was becoming more difficult to convince his body to move with each passing day. The weight of his legs seemed unsteady at first, but soon gained their stride as he maneuvered toward the washroom. The light hummed to life as he entered the room. His eyes took a moment to adjust to the light. In the mirror, a scarred and hardened man frowned back at him. The years of war had chiseled a much older appearance than he knew himself to be. He cupped his hands together underneath the faucet, and a steady stream of water began to pour. The cold was refreshing as he splashed the water against his face. He blinked water from his eyes, just in time to see a figure behind him in the mirror. He growled, spinning around and reaching instinctively for his sidearm. Every muscle and sinew tightened for combat and survival. The room was empty. He turned slowly back to the mirror and glimpsed the figure again. A woman, her hair dark and flowing, her eyes burning like wildfire. He blinked and she was gone but he could still feel her hand graze the side of his face. Her soft touch seemed to be burned into his flesh. He steadied his mind and tried to shake free from what must have been a waking dream. He took his time grooming himself to perfection. His appearance mattered. Many looked to him as an example of what they should be. He shaved the day-old stubble from his face and combed his short, dark brown hair. This daily routine, unchanged since he first became a soldier ten years ago, steadied him and calmed his mind. His stride was much more balanced as his body became accustomed to what it must do. He walked back into his bedroom and saw his uniform hanging from the closet door. Pressed to perfection, there wasn't a wrinkle or stray thread in sight. An assortment of medals and ribbons weighed heavy on the breast of his jacket. Each of them were meant to symbolize a victory or achievement. To him, however, they were a constant reminder of those who gave their lives under his command. He pushed down the feeling of sorrow to the deepest recesses of his mind as he pulled the burden of his uniform onto his body. He walked past the mirror one last time to ensure his appearance met the standards expected of him. He picked up his gun from the bedside table. He double-checked the slide and safety. He removed the clip and ensured it was fully loaded. He nestled it tight into the holster attached on the right side of his belt. He'd probably never need it here, but he was always prepared, no matter the situation. Finally, it was time to face the unexpected nature of his day. His pace was steady and brisk as he moved through the sleek and polished hallways of this place he now called home. It had been almost three months since he was ordered to take command of the Solaris Sky Station, and he was still adjusting to his technologically advanced surroundings. He had been reluctant to accept the reassignment, but he would never defy a direct order from the Commandant. He was a soldier. He was at home on the ground piloting war-torn battle mechs, but every day that he walked these spotless halls, he silently reminded himself, he must be the best person for this assignment if Commandant Xavier chose him. He walked on to the command deck of the station and nodded as bridge officers snapped to attention and saluted. He always found himself in awe of the command deck, with its sleek control panels and seamless mechanical efficiency. The Elorians were pioneers in the field of mechanical engineering, and the Solaris Sky Station was the pride of the Elorian military. He listened carefully as his subordinates gave him their daily reports. 
and then he gave orders to maintain the current coordinates in the lowest stratosphere of Valos. He entered the command quarters adjacent to the bridge. The large porthole above his desk showed an endless carpet of white fluffy clouds below the sky station, and an infinite blue above. He touched the panel on the wall, and the window tinted darkly. Settling into his chair, he tapped the monitor built into the desk and activated the station's AI. Good morning, Commander Strathmore. Alorian time is 0546. Propulsion, navigation, weapons, and life support systems operating within normal parameters. Personnel count is 973. There are six new incident reports, and the brig is now at maximum capacity. He frowned and rested his elbows on the desk as he leaned forward. Six new reports in one night, and four from the night before. The increasing violence on the station made him uneasy. His years of combat and survival told him something was not right. Something was simmering on the sky station. Some negative energy. He thought of the woman in the mirror and clenched his teeth. Access all files. Sort by date and pertinence. Authorization. Arthur J. Strathmore. Several panels on the desk shifted to reveal a retinal scanner and a fingerprint analysis pad. He opened his eyes wide and placed his right hand upon the screen. Final authorization code required. <clears throat> Justice is the sum of all moral duty. Voice recognition and passphrase accepted. Priority message intercepted at 0325. Origin point unknown. Encrypted. Marked urgent. Your eyes only. Dr. Stein. Thaddeus Miles. Arthur's eyes narrowed. His suspicion was confirmed. He wasn't the least bit surprised that Stein was connected to whatever was stirring the violence on the sky station. Thank you, Solaris. Turn off all monitoring protocols. Monitoring protocols disabled. His frown deepened as he began reading the message intended for Dr. Stein. 07-06-11-23. Sit rep. Detailed analysis of the blast radius will be priority. Current estimated death toll is at 10,000 and counting. No residual radiation readings within the greater Elorian barrier. It is my current assessment that the terrorist group operating out of Riverside has been handled. However, the port city is a total loss. Operative codename Demon reported a complete success. Awaiting further instructions. Signed, Lieutenant Commander Caldwell. Strathmore felt his blood begin to boil. Riverside had been his first appointment as an officer and had meant more to him than anyone would ever know. Commandant Xavier had entrusted him with the security of an important Elorian military facility on the outskirts of Riverside Port City. During his time there, he had come to appreciate and admire the hard work and dedication of its citizens. And he had fond memories of the beautiful women, the unique foods, and the loyalty of the community. Now, according to this classified report, Everything he had kept close in his heart about Riverside was nothing more than a memory. Solaris, lockdown terminal. Give me the current location of Stein. Personnel designation, Stein, TM, located in Engineering, Level 1, Core Power Supply Systems Terminal. Strathmore stormed out of the command quarters. He ignored the worried faces and inquisitive stares as he hurried off of the bridge. Making his way to the engineering deck would normally be a short trip, but as his adrenaline surged, time seemed to stand still. He had a long-standing resentment of Dr. Stein, and even suspected him of several crimes against the people of the Elorian nation, not to mention the fact that Stein himself had surgically installed all of operative codename Demon's cybernetic modifications. If anyone could have engineered such a devastating weapon, it would have been Stein. 
Greater Eloria had a long-standing relationship with Riverside Port City. Not only would this tragedy affect the economic structure of the Elorian government, but first and foremost, he saw this loss of life, and his own personal loss, as unforgivable. Commander Strathmore wanted answers, no matter the cost, and he would have them now.